Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. Now, when a graphics card first launches, it comes with what's known as a launch driver. It's a driver that's specifically made for that particular graphics card or that particular GPU. Now, what happens over time with thanks to feedback from both consumers and R&D departments is a driver has a chance to mature a little bit. And sometimes that does mean that performance will increase over time, especially when it comes to gaming. So what we're actually gonna be doing today is we have the Sapphire, Pulse Radeon RX 570, and we're gonna be looking at the differences in performance between its initial launch driver, the Crimson Relive, as well as today's latest adrenaline drivers. I mean, let's see if we can get some free performance because who doesn't love that, right? This card and Radeon cards in general have been facilitated by several drivers over the last few years. The original Crimson series, followed by the Crimson Relive drivers, which added the Relive screen capture utility, and now we have the Adrenaline series, offering the latest round of improvements and optimizations. So we're gonna be taking the card and benchmarking it firstly on the original Crimson Relive drivers, 17.4.2, and the newer Adrenaline driver, 18.8.2, which did release on the 27th of August, which at the time of filming was only a couple of days ago. What we're mainly looking at is what kind of performance increases consumers can expect to see down the road, some months after a card first hit the shelves. I mean, who doesn't love free performance, especially when it comes to something so simple as just an update? First up, we want to quickly mention some of the features present in Radeon software. All of these have been updated along the way, including recently with the new Adrenaline drivers. First up, we have the Wattman utility. It allows you to not only create your own custom overclocking profiles, but also to upload them to the cloud to share with other users. Likewise, you can download and apply other users' custom overclocking profiles to your own card to see how well they work on your system. This is a neat way of facilitating community collaboration when it comes to finding those sweet spot settings for your GPU. We've also got Radeon Chill. This first arrived in December 2016 with the Crimson Relive driver update and is another feature to get an update with Adrenaline. It basically detects the level of motion and detail on the screen at any given time and varies the power consumption and cooling of your card based on what kind of clock speeds are required to generate a good frame per second, given the situation in hand. This obviously pays off over time as your GPU will only work at full capacity when needed, saving you power and keeping the card cooler on average and potentially increasing the longevity of the card. Radeon Enhanced Sync, which was added in Crimson Relive version 17.7.2, is designed to reduce screen tearing when your in-game frame rates supersede the refresh rate of your monitor. Ideally, you would want to go all the way and use Radeon FreeSync, but this would require owning a FreeSync compatible monitor. Radeon Relive has also undergone some changes over the years. It's far more user friendly than it once was, with many more options. For example, you can now upload or stream your gameplay footage directly to social media from within this tab. We also get two completely new features bundled with our Adrenaline Driver update. First up, we now have the very cool AMD Overlay. This gives us the ability to see most of our tweakable settings on screen during gameplay, and among other things, offers a full set of real-time color correction tools, which is definitely a nice thing to have access to during gaming. Rounding things off, we have a brand new smartphone app, AMD Link. This allows for real-time monitoring of your GPU performance, along with the ability to control and upload using Relive remotely. This is especially useful if you don't want to tab out of your game and set that up. So with the software to one side, obviously if that kind of thing does interest you, it is worth looking into it a little bit more. But we're here for one thing and one thing only, sheer unadulterated performance. But first, let's take a look at the specs of the system we're gonna be testing with. For reference, the system that we're conducting these on has an ASUS Z370 eGaming motherboard with an i7-8700K Intel CPU, clocked to five gigahertz. We overclocked this to alleviate any bottleneck, providing for more accurate results of the GPU. This system also has 32 gig of Team Group Nighthawk RGB DDR4 3000 megahertz memory. And for the storage, we have a Kingston KC1000 NVMe SSD. So let's kick off our benchmarks with 3D Mark Firestrike. We ran this using all three of its variations, Firestrike, Firestrike Extreme, and Firestrike Ultra. Running the 17.4.2 Crimson Relive drivers from April 2017, we got 11,065, 5,403, 
and 2853 respectively. Running the latest Adrenaline drivers released on the 28th of August this year, we got 11,736, 5,729 and 3,030. So definitely a slight improvement in this set of synthetic benchmarks. Next up is Unigen Superposition, 1080p Extreme and Unigen Superposition 4K Optimized. Our older drivers gave us 2,273 and 3,136 respectively, while our newer Adrenaline drivers gave us 2,295 and 3,164. Not a huge jump, but still something for nothing. Moving on to some games, starting with DirectX 12 enabled games, let's start with Deus Ex Mankind Divided at 1080p, 1440p, and of course 4K. Our Crimson Relive drivers gave us a score of 76.1 frames per second at 1080p, 48.1 at 1440p, and 23.5 frames per second at 4K. Our Adrenaline drivers gave us 74.2 at 1080p, 48.6 at 1440p, and 30 frames per second at 4K. So 4K was where we saw the biggest jump. Next up, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider. Again, at 1080, 1440, and 4K. Now the Crimson Relive drivers gave us 100.48 frames per second in 1080p, 67.08 at 1440p, and 34.12 at 4K. While Adrenaline gave us a slightly less 99.66 at 1080p, 67.71 at 1440p and 34.28 frames per second at 4K. Not the greatest in terms of what results we got when we updated the drivers, and due to the results being so close, we'd actually put this more down to margin of error. It is also worth remembering that both of these games are DirectX 12 enabled. Moving on to some DirectX 11 benchmarks, we tested Far Cry Primal to start. At 1080p, our Crimson 17.4.2 drivers turned up an FPS of 93, while at 1440p, we had a comfortable 61 frames per second, and at 4K, frames per second came out at 30, while our Adrenaline 18.8.2 drivers gave us 96, 62, and 31. Last but not least, we tested Ghost Recon Wildlands, which again is DirectX 11 enabled, and it ran at 68.62 frames per second at 1080p, 48.52 at 1440p, and 26.45 at 4K resolutions with our Crimson drivers. Now, when we moved over to our Adrenaline drivers, we got 70.10 frames per second at 1080, 49.91 at 1440p, and 27.21 at 4K. A slight increase, but nothing crazy. So as you can see, most of the kind of performance increases came from the synthetic benchmarks. We did have a few kind of results that I guess were going in the right direction for our games, but nothing out of the ordinary. Especially when you look at Tomb Raider, it was very much a margin of error. I think if we ran the tests a few more times on both drivers, we would have carried on seeing very similar results. Now, when we started these tests, we did come into this with a bit of an open mind. We didn't quite know what to expect, but we was expecting ever so slight performance increases. I mean, you wouldn't expect performance to go down after all this time, right? Now you do have to remember that if budget constraints don't really permit you to buy a new graphics card and you do wanna get more performance, this is just one simple way. Another way is obviously overclocking your graphics card. And if it comes to say Sapphire, they do actually have their own software to do so. Or you could simply use part of the AMD Adrenaline drivers. So the choice is yours there. It's just another way of essentially getting more performance for free. And I mean, simply who doesn't love getting more performance without spending any money? If overclocking is something you want us to look at, potentially maybe we could look at doing a video of that in the future. So let us know in the comments section below if that's something that you'd like to see. Now, if you did like this video, you know what to do, guys. Remember to smash that like button, give us a comment below. And if you're not subscribed, remember to do that as well and click that little bell icon. It really does help us out. Until then, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.